Okay, now we'll talk about evaluating limits for rational functions. And we'll start with three really simple examples. Look at this first one. The limit as x approaches 2 of 4x over x minus 5. Well, if you can simply take this value, an x value of 2, and plug that in for the variable. In this case, that gives us 4 times 2 over 2 minus 5, which is 8 over negative 3 and I'll write that as negative eight-thirds. If you can just plug in the value for the variable and get a finite answer like that, then, then you're fine. That You're done. That's the answer. Okay, sometimes zeros show up. Look at this next example. Let's try taking an x value of seven and plugging it in for the variable x right there. So this is two times seven minus 14 over seven plus one that's 0 over 8 and 0 over 8 is of course 0 and you're done there also a 0 numerator is okay not a problem at all 0 over some number is simply 0 and 0 is a perfectly fine number just as good as any other so you're done in that case too don't don't worry about a 0 numerator unless you also have a 0 denominator and that's what shows up in this third case if we plug in an x value of 3 right here, notice this factor right here, x minus 3, that becomes 0. So whatever this is times 0, we're going to have a 0 numerator. And then we also have a 0 denominator. So this gives us 0 over 0. Now what's going on here? Well, 0 over 0 is an indeterminate form. When we get a 0 over 0 like this, we try to simplify the expression. And this one simplifies, of course, very, very easily. We can just cancel those out. What that means is that this original function behaves exactly like this function, x plus 2, except there's a hole in the graph because of that 0 denominator. There's a hole in the graph at x equals 3. But very close to 3, as long as we're not exactly at x equals 3, we're just near x equals 3, the function will still be behaving like this, x plus 2. So we can just say, say the limit here is going to be x plus 2, which in this case is 3 plus 2, which is just 5. So as the, the function gets near, as the x value gets near 3, the value of the function gets near 5. So the thing to note here is that we had a 0 denominator right here. And in rational functions, a 0 denominator uh, usually corresponds to a vertical asymptote, but if we have a zero denominator and a zero numerator, we often simply have a hole in the graph, and we can still calculate a finite value for the limit. And the trick there is simplifying the expression, being able to simplify whatever rational function you were given. And in this case, it's simplified very easily. In other cases, you need to uh, employ some tricks or some of your knowledge of math from back in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus in order to simplify the expressions. So what we'll be doing next is going over several examples of rational functions and techniques that we use to simplify them so that we can calculate the limit at the value that we need to calculate it. Now here's our first example. The limit as x approaches 7 of x squared minus 4x minus 21 over x minus 7. Well, What happens if we take a value of 7 and plug it in for the variable x in all of those places. Well, clearly we get a zero denominator. That's easy to see. If x is seven, we have a zero in the denominator. Uh, let's figure out the numerator here. 49, up top we have 49 minus 28 minus 21. That's also zero. So we have zero over zero. So what we, what we do is try to simplify this. And the clue here, well, we could, we could try to factor this and how to factor it, the clue is to look at this x minus 7. Can we factor this? Can we say the limit as x approaches 7? Can we factor this so that there's an x minus 7 factor up top as well? And, and in fact, we can in this case. This factors is x minus 7 times x plus 3. So the x minus 7's cancel. So near a value of x equals 7 as long as we're not exactly at x equals 7 so that we don't have a zero denominator. The function will simply behave like x plus 3. So we can just plug in the value 7 in for x right there and we get 7 plus 3 
we get 10. 10 is our answer. That's the limit. Here's another example. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of x cubed plus 8 over x plus 2. Now if we try to pl plug in a value negative 2 here in for x, that's going to be negative 8 plus 8, that'll be a 0, over negative 2 plus 2, 0, 0 over 0. So we can't do that, so we try to simplify this expression. Now how can we simplify this? Well you might remember sum of two cubes right here. x cubed plus 8 can be thought of as x cubed plus 2 cubed, and that will factor the sum of two cubes. So we can actually rewrite this as the limit as x approaches negative 2, and this sum of two cubes factors as x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. over x plus 2. And then these guys cancel out. And then we can just plug in negative 2 for x up here and here. And so this works out to be uh, negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 4. And that ends up being 12, and that's our answer. Now if you don't remember how to factor the sum of two cubes right here, that this factors into this, and, and that's a, a tricky one, or not necessarily tricky, but it's not all that common. The sum of two cubes is not a common uh, expression, like the difference of two squares, for example. So you might not remember how to factor that, but you can still work this out. You can remember that this is one polynomial divided by another, and this is a real simple one down here we can tackle this division here with synthetic division and get this same result right here and I'll, sh I'll show you how to do it that way also x cubed plus 8 could be written as x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 8 so let's write down those coefficients that's 1 0 0 and 8 so 1 0 0 and 8 and I'm dividing this by x minus negative 2. So I'll put a negative 2 out front here and then work through the synthetic division here. Bring down my 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 and then I add those 2 and I get negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 and I add those and I get a 4 and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 and I add those and I get a 0 which is what I want. That means that x minus this is a factor, so x minus negative 2, that's x plus 2. And these numbers down here give us the coefficients of the other factor, that's x squared minus 2x plus 4. And you see that's just what we got right up here. So if you don't remember how to factor the sum of two cubes, don't despair. In this case, because it's divided by a simple first degree polynomial, we can up approach that with synthetic division pretty quickly and easily.